What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video. Today we are starting our Tableau tutorial series. Now this series is for absolute beginners, so if you have never used Tableau before, you are in the perfect place. I'm gonna take you all the way from the very beginning of installing it and just understanding what Tableau is and how you can use it, all the way to creating dashboards and sharing it. Now personally, I hate those videos that are like three hours long and they just expect you to go through it. Uh, I like to break my videos up into chunks, so if you have ever done my SQL tutorials, you'll know that I like to break things up so it gives you time to try them out and do them yourself and then you can move on to the next video. So I'm gonna be breaking this up into five separate videos. But in this video, I'm gonna show you how to install Tableau for free. I'm gonna show you the user interface. We're gonna download a data set that you can find on Kaggle, and then we will build our first visualization together. With that being said, let's jump over my screen and we'll get started. All right, so the very first thing that we need to do is you need to actually download Tableau. So we're not gonna be using Tableau, we're gonna be using a free version called Tableau Public. It has a lot of the same features, except of course it's not uh, every single feature that regular Tableau has, but it is absolutely perfect for learning it and for using it, and, and you can even build um, you know, dashboards and share those for your portfolio. Um, I'm gonna put this link in the description so you can just go and click on that, and, and all you have to do is input your email right here. I'm gonna click download the app, um, and then it should start to download, and then you can save that, and then you're gonna open this up. Now, I'm gonna open it up. I don't know what it's going to do. I already have it downloaded, um, but it should open up and look, hopefully, like what you're seeing on uh, my screen in just a second. Let's see what it does. Um, I hope you can see this, uh, but it says Tableau Public. Um, it says I already have it set up, but you're gonna click install and go through all that um, all that setup stuff. Uh, so I'm gonna exit out of here. But I'm gonna go over here and type in Tableau Public, uh, and it's 2021.3, that's the current version that they have out. If you're doing this in the future, they may have you know different versions. Um, so you should be able to pull this up right here. Now, um, I'm going to go and get our data set that we're gonna be using, and I'm gonna show you how to get that as well, and then we will actually jump into Tableau and start uh, using it. So let's go over here. I'm gonna get a data set from Kaggle. I wanted something pretty generic uh, to show you. In future videos, I'm gonna show you some special, or not special, but just different visualizations that you might use. Um, and we'll get different data sets for those because of course not one data set covers all these other types of visualizations. So um, we're starting off pretty simple right here. We're gonna be getting one called video game sales. Um, and we can take a really quick look at it. Um, here are some of the fields that you're gonna be having, uh, like rank, name, platform, the year, genre, and then some sales data. And this is what it actually looks like. It's called VG sales, so video game sales, it's in a CSV. And, um, you know, here are the fields and we have our data. And all we are going to do is we're going to download that and I will save it. Now, when you download it, it's gonna be saved into a zip file. So we need to go to our downloads. Uh, let's refresh this. Here's our archive. We need to go in here. You can just copy it and paste it right back into here. Um, and just so you know, that is a, uh, a, a CSV, so be aware of that. So what we wanna do is we wanna come in here. Now, since it is a CSV, this is not, we're not gonna be using Microsoft Excel. We're gonna be using the text file. So we'll come in here, we'll take VG sales. Now, I, uh, one thing I wanna do before I do that is I'm gonna rename mine uh, VG sales underscore one. Um, I've already prepared for this, and so I already have that in there. Um, but I, So I wanna make a distinct one for myself. You do not have to do that. So we'll come back here. Um, and then we're gonna do text file and then VG sales. We're gonna open that up. And when it pulls up right here, um, you can bring in other tables and then you can start to join them together and create those relationships. We are not gonna be doing that in this video. We'll do that in a separate one. Um, as for you know, just getting started, you know, we're not gonna be using that, but you can see um, some of these things or some of these fields and if you notice they they um they're either abc or they're a number so it starts to categorize what this field type is so is it a string is it numeric it starts to automatically do that and that's all done within tableau 
And so it just kind of reads it and that's what it does. Um, what we are going to do is when I click right down here, it's called go to worksheet. Um, the worksheets are where you're gonna actually start being able to build your visualizations, your charts, your graphs, all these things. Um, and so, you know, we have this in here now. And so we're just gonna click right here on go to worksheet. As you can see, here is VG sales underscore one. You will not have the underscore one if you did not add that like I did. Uh, but right down here, you can see all the fields that we just imported from that data set. And they even created one right here for us. Uh, they just generated that field uh, based on the file. So it's a count of all the rows, really. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to walk you through uh, basically what we're looking at, some of the things that we're going to be using today. There will be things that I don't talk about, but I'm going to highlight those in, set, in, in future videos when we start using those or going over them. Um, and so let's just start with the most obvious one. It's way over here. I'm sure you saw it when we uh, this first came up on the screen because it has all these different charts and visualizations and graphs. And uh, these will become available as you start dragging and dropping our data into this sheet. And so if I go right here, it says four scatter plots, try zero or more dimensions, two to four measures. So what our dimensions are, are right here and what our measures are are right down here and so typically uh, things like like you say genre or names or or strings like that are going to be these uh, dimensions and then a lot of a lot of times the numerical is going to be are going to be measures next what i want to show you is right here so you can take something like global sales and you can drag it right here into your rows and then it takes your rows. And so it automatically created a sum of global sales. Now, if we take that away, and let's say we drag it right here, it's going to give us a column. Now, you can also do it right up here. You don't have to um, drag it on screen. You can also just add it to the column or the row. That's typically what I do. I, it's just more intuitive to me. Um, or you can drop it in this section right here, and it does its best to assign it some type of um, some type of visualization. And so that's what it always is trying to do. It is trying to say, oh, okay, this is what you're trying to do. Let me try to get the best visualization for the data that you're giving me. Now, while we are here, um, it went down here into marks and marks is a very important area. It's where you can add color, size, text, detail, and tooltip. And I'm not going to go into what all those are because I'm just going to show you. So let's start pulling some fields in here and creating a visualization. And then I'm going to show you how all of that works, including filters as well. So the first thing that we are going to look at is global sales. And let's put that in the rows. And then I'm going to take year and I'm going to make that the column. And this is basically exactly what uh, I wanted to do. Now, as of right now, it has only the year and it's looking at global sales for everything, but we want to break that out a little bit better. I want to break it out by, let's do genre. So different genre of games. Now, if I add that right here to this columns, it is going to break it up by year and genre. If I add it right here, it is going to break it out by the year, of course, but then in each individual row has the different genre. That's not what we want. We want to keep this type of line graph. Uh, and what all we're going to do is we're going to add it to marks. And you can't really see it based off of these colors, but they're all different. So we have action genre, we have the sports genre, racing, uh, role playing, all these different genres within it. Now we can get rid of that because we don't need it anymore. Uh, and this is where these, um, these marks really come in handy because you can start basically doing what you want with them. So for the genre, I want to be able to see all these different genres with different colors. To me, that just makes the most sense. So I'm going to put color right here and automatically it assigns every single genre its own color and gives us this legend right over here. And so it's really easy to see. Well, when you have smaller numbers, it's much easier, but I know that red is sports and I can go right here and find red and that is sports. So it makes it a lot easier than when it is all the same color blue. So what you can do after that is you can also add things like uh, a label to it. So if we take 
label and we or we take genre put label you can click right here and you can get rid of the labels that you have and you can see them right down here or you can also change uh, the font so if you want to make it orange or, or whatever color you can do all those same things and you can also do things like changing where you see these things so for action you're going to see it a ton because for each year action is is at the is on the higher end and so you're seeing those in those mins and maxes you can also do it for a selected area so if i come in here and i select it it's then going to show me what those are so label is really really uh, useful really helpful let me get rid of that really quick uh, you can also do it where the lines end so line ends is at the beginning and the end and you can also take that away or put that back on so labels are really important. Labels aren't very helpful when you're doing, at least I don't find that it's super helpful when you're doing things like genre. So when you're doing your dimensions. So I'm gonna get rid of that and I'm actually going to bring our global sales over here. And let's label that. And right now I think it's labeling the uh, line ends. We wanna do the min and max. Now, if we do min and max on the table, it's just gonna give us the max and the min, which is zero and then 139.4. It's a little bit more useful if we do it for each line. Uh, this at least gives us some context. I probably wouldn't do this in an actual visual visualization, but to give you some um, understanding of how, just how it works. So now I know that um, right over here, the min and the max, or the min, uh, sorry, the max for these for action and for sports, uh, is right around 138, 139. So it's pretty easy to see. Um, and you can, again, go in here and you can remove the max or remove the mins, whichever one you feel is best. Uh, you'll probably keep the maximums in there for each category. And so this is a really quickly becoming uh, a pretty usable visualization. And that's not the only label that you can add. We still are using year over here, so we can always drop year in there as well create a label. And so now we have, let's see for this one is a puzzle genre. So we also have the year that it had the maximum uh, sales. And so, you know, just some things that you can do, you don't have to add that. Now let's go up here and we're going to take a look at filters because filters are really important. You know, if you are making this for a client or you are making this for somebody, you want them to be able to filter down uh, to very specific information that they want to see. So let's take uh, the platform. Lots of different platforms. Um, as you can see, you know, PS4, Xbox, um, if you're familiar with these, we'll click all of these um, and we'll click OK. So now this is an option as a filter. And all we're going to do is we're going to click on this arrow right here and we're going to say show filter. Now, Right now, all of them are selected. So every single one is being taken into account for this visualization. But let's say we come down here and we say, okay, I don't wanna see sales for any of these PS, the original PlayStation two, three, or four. So I'm gonna get rid of this one, this one, this one, and this one. And you could immediately see the, the changes that were happening. So now none of the numbers, none of those sales are being accounted for and, and being added to the sum of global sales right here at all. So uh, that is just how a filter uh, can work. And you can also do that and you can get rid of all of them and you can go in and actually just pick very specific sales. So if you only wanna see the PlayStation sales, you can go in there and do that as well. So really, really handy filters are things that you, you will at least want to have as an option for most of your, your visualizations. At least that's what I found, especially when you're doing client facing work. They like to uh, get in there and mess around and look at different look at it in different ways. And so that's one that I I think is is really useful to to have. The very last thing that we want to do is we want to actually add this to a dashboard now. Let's say we add, come right down here and we add a new worksheet and actually we might change one more thing on that last one, but we'll just make a really simple one. Um, we'll just give it genre and we'll give it global sales as the rows. Um, and this nifty button right up here, which is a sorting button. So I'm going to sort like that. I'm going to add the genre in just as we did. I'll give it different colors. Perfect. 
Now we have two really quick different visualizations, right? What I want to do is just show you how to combine those because what you are going to do is you're going to actually come in here and you're going to do new dashboard. That's what this button is right here. Now, when we come in here, the size is extremely small. Uh, it's very easy to fix that. All we're going to do is click right here. We're going to go to this range or this drop down and we're going to click automatic. So now it is a much larger size for us to actually drop our visualizations into. Uh, and let's put sheet one and we'll put uh, let's put it up top. So now it looks a little bit like this. Uh, not perfect, but again, if I wanted to make this look a lot better, I definitely would. And then you can go over here and you can rename these things. You can also do that back when we were in our actual uh, worksheets, but you can also do it here as well and then start um, you know, customizing and building it out. That's not what this video is for. That is the last video we're gonna build an entire dashboard. It'll be kind of like a small project. You can put that in your portfolio. Um, if you have gotten this far and you want to jump straight into it and you don't want to wait for these other videos to come out or you don't, you just want to jump straight into creating an entire portfolio project, I have an entire portfolio project series that covers SQL, Python, and Tableau. And so go check out that series. I have one video dedicated to Tableau. It's like 45 minutes or an hour long. And it covers a lot of the things that we're going to hear in here as well as a few other things. But I appreciate you checking out this video. In future videos, we're going to be going over things like creating bins, calculated fields, doing joins, and then creating a final project and putting it all together. So thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. If you like this video, be sure to like and subscribe below, and I will see you in the next video.